What's up, Soul Squad? It is Kate with Soul Sess Twins. Welcome to our holiday survival guide on how to stay sober or try not drinking this holiday season. Here is part one. We hope you enjoy it. And as always, reach out to us with any questions or comments. Hey, Soul Tribe, it's Kate and Carrie. We are so excited to have you here at this new episode. Please review and subscribe at the end. It's free and it helps us keep spreading our message to you, our awesome listener. Thanks so much and enjoy the episode. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Soul Sest. Kate and I are super excited to be here. I am Carrie, your host in California. What's up guys? It is Kate in New York. This is holiday season. So what better topic to introduce to you guys and talk with you guys about than how do you not drink during the holidays? And really, what is it really like? Like what really goes down? Yeah. And if it's something that you're, you know, wanting to do this holiday season, then Kate and I just thought, what a great way to just bring our experience to the table on how to do that and, you know, what great points to prepare yourself for so that you can be successful at doing it and exactly what it's really like so that you're not just like slapped in the face with scenarios that you didn't think of. Mm -hmm. Right. So we each wrote down a couple points um, actually from this wonderful book, living sober and it's a book that the 12 step program you know uses a lot and it's just such a wonderful tool to to have so if you wanted to get that we'll put it in the um notes on how you could i'm sure amazon has living sober it's a yellow book yeah you just you can even just google living sober and it'll come up it's it is really like carrie said it's just such an amazing pamphlet stuff you don't really you know it's like you're nervous about but you don't know what it is you're nervous about like these questions these scenarios that come up and this book really covers pretty much every angle especially for those that are new to the game like new to thinking that you know wanting to feel like you know what it feels like to not drink what is that really like and how would you even go about doing it so we're going to go into tackling that exactly so the first one that seems sort of obvious but you never really think of it is to stay away from the first drink Mm -hmm. right and so it's like well yeah but you don't realize that The first drink, like preparing yourself to not take the first drink is everything. And how do you do that? Right. And why? Well, the first drink, they always say this, the first drink gets you drunk. And I would always be like, "Um, no, it's the third or the fourth. And it's like, no, the first gets you to the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth. Right. So if you don't take the first, you can't take the second. Yeah, I remember first hearing that too. And be, you know, it's the first drink that gets you drunk. And I'm like, these fucking amateurs, they don't know what they're talking about. They've yeah. obviously never drank the way that I did, getting yeah. hammered. Like what? But then it that's the logic of it is that if you don't pick up the first drink, you can't get drunk. You can't take the second. You can't take the third. You can't have the whole bottle. Exactly. And ruin the party. So yeah. <laughs> In your life. <laughs> so that's the first one, which is the first one, right? That's amazing to realize. Like, oh, right. I just have to stay away from the first drink. Yeah. And Kate has, what's number two for you? My number two, and how do you do that, is really using this 24 hour plan. Just thinking in the beginning of me, like not drinking. What terrified me the most was thinking that I was never going to drink again for the rest of my life. And, you know, at the time, Carrie and I were 29 years old. I had like a long life ahead of me. And I just, the only experience that I really knew 
of life really was associated with drinking. Like you got through joy, you got through pain, you got through sorrow, you got through finals, you got through, you know, prom drinking. And so I could not fathom the rest of my life. And it's probably what kept me drinking for longer than even, you know, up until I was 29 is because the, I, I, who didn't drink? And that's basically who you end up with, especially towards the end of your drinking days. You're not hanging around with people that casually drink or don't drink, or I don't even know if I knew anyone that didn't drink, I, yeah. you know, like casual I did, but um, and I didn't want, you know, wasn't who I was hanging with. So I just thought, you know, I do also remember thinking, you know, when I was 29 and early in my not drinking days, sobriety, whatever you want to call it, thinking like, what am I doing? Like I'm 29. I should be not like getting sober or stopping drinking when I'm like 40 or 45. Like what? It's just so crazy. Like, cause you're so how quickly we forget, you know, the misery that brought you to this place of debating whether or not you should be drinking, you know, quickly, we're just romanticizing it again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I also think like, now being sober is so much more acceptable and such a bigger idea of like, yeah, like, it's, drinking is really fucked up, right? Like a lot of people are like really turning on to the fact that it really affects their life. And it's such like a health and trendy thing to do now is like to be sober um, more than it was. Yes. Right? Um, so yeah. And it was just so jammed down our throats, literally and figuratively on how great drinking is or like everything, like especially the holidays is about drinking and, you know, it's just unbelievable. So now I think people have a little bit more, um, you know, less pressure to than we had. I mean, everywhere you went, it was like, why aren't you drinking? Like, you're such a weirdo. Yeah. You feel like such a weirdo. But you're like, I don't know. Like, I just, my life sucks. Doesn't yours? Like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, or I'm not going to answer that. I will horrify you. So don't ask me that question. Why am I not drinking? But I mean, and also, you know why? Like, what do you talk? You know why I'm not? Okay. You've told me several times not to. Now I'm not. And it's a problem. <laughs> so, okay. My thing too with this is that even if sometimes you get like a desire that's stronger than just saying, you know what, I'm just not going to drink for today. So break, you can even break down the 24 hours and just, you can use, you know what, I'm just not going to drink for this hour. I'm just not going to drink for this morning, you know, and that's how you can also bite off chunks of life by bringing it to the present moment. Just bring, bring your life to chunks of an hour or six hours, whatever you need. There is no like hard rule to this stuff. You got to really get creative and ask yourself like, what is going to help me not torture me today, just today? Yeah, I think that's such a valid point. I, I 24 hours just overwhelmed me so much. It was like 24 hours, don't drink. <laughs> And to really break it down to like, no, right now, I'm not going to drink for this hour and then get busy with something. Don't sit there watching the clock. Just get busy. Just have it in your head. Like, I'm not going to drink for this hour and then go do something and watch two hours go by. Right. Which actually brings us to the next one, which I thought was really important is that make a call, get up and get connected because you, every single person knows someone, whether it's personal or six degree of separated, right? Like separated by six degrees, you know, someone, if it's, you know, uncle Jimmy's cousins, brothers, nephew, you, you're, you know, them somehow, some way, get their number and make a call, get up and just place the call. And it's going to feel crazy. It's going to feel crazy if you know them and if you don't know them. But trust me, the person getting the call who is no longer drinking knows all too well what you're calling for and how to handle the call. And it helps them. 
massively. They need it too. They need an ally. They need, you know, um, a buddy to know someone else is not drinking too. It's just like a, a, um, a support system that they need and you need. So it's a win-win a hundred percent. Um, also one to say, if you do have a friend to say, Hey, you want to not drink this holiday season, you know, you want to do it together so that you can have each other. Um, if that, you know, is available to you. So I think support is crucial. Support is crucial. And you don't have to say, oh, I feel like drinking. You just trust me when I say, just pick up the phone and dial the number. And when they answer, just say, hey, they're going to take over the conversation. They know what to do. Like if anybody calls me and I know that they're new to not drinking, I know just what to say. Like it's, and it's, the com <laughs> this is what's so crazy. I think people, you know, you're not going to know until you go into this, this journey of you don't really understand the you we feel camaraderie when we're in the bar, right? When we're all drinking together. It's that wonderful like conviviality of of part partnership together, of of you know, being together and that warmth and that connection. You can't believe the level of connection and camaraderie you get when not drinking and associating with others that don't also, especially those that have come before you. And those, like you just said, like that you're doing it with. I mean, the bond is so far greater than what the bond is in the bar. It's true. It's just so real. I mean, because the bar, you know, it's just like, yay. But when you're doing something like this and you're sober and you're connecting on that level, you're just like, whoa, like it's really in intense. Yeah. And it's, you know, at the bar, like, yay. But inside, like, do you, I mean, come, like a lot are dying. A lot are yeah. miserable. Well, like I meant like too, like, yay, like surface. Like you're not really, it's camaraderie that's just like, it's not all that deep right <laughs> and oh, or, underneath. what and there's misery underneath there i was always like here i am again getting shit-faced how awesome or you know you've you've overshared way too much <laughs> and you're gonna wake up remorseful guilt-ridden and completely humiliated so it's just it's always like the safer bet is just for the day is just try not to drink. I mean, if you're looking to not do this, this is how you do it. And try to get like one or two. I mean, it would be great if you had like a partner, but one or two phone numbers that of those that are not drinking that you know about. Somebody knows somebody. Yeah, somebody knows somebody. And if you really don't, then just know and connect to yourself, commit to this, go in the bathroom, take a moment, right? I mean, if you don't have somebody, you have you, okay? Go online, go online, go online, go hop on a, a Zoom uh, AA meeting and don't say a word, just listen. Doesn't mean you're an alcoholic, by the way. You yeah. just have a desire to stop drinking, to enter a meeting. That's all you and need. also, actually, you have, I mean, the people, these people today, man, I mean, give me a break. You could pop on TikTok or Instagram and th put in not drinking t the holidays and watch how many people are like me too or have great things to say. Give me a break. We have so much at our fingertips. I just realized that I would wish to have had all of that. It's amazing. So built in support system. Yep. Um, okay, so because we are coming up on the holidays and, and getting together with family, um, you know, that you don't always see or those that you do see a lot of that you have emotional entanglements with. So you're going over to, you know, your mom or dad's or, you know, sister Susie or whatever, Uncle Bob, Bob. <laughs> And you're thinking of people that you're just like, oh my God, do you have like an intense situation with? Instead of, this is really, really helpful. No, instead of just staying in your head about it and thinking, oh God, you know, dreading this or that, know who you have an issue with 
and steer clear of them. <laughs> Have a short phrase you can say and walk away. Like, hello, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously though, write it out, right? Write out like, okay, Uncle Bob, and to not stay in your head about it and have, because you want to prepare yourself in advance of people that irritate you or that, you know, you have issues with and have a plan of action. Write down something that you can say a quick phrase, basically happy holidays. And seriously, that's it. Move on mm -hmm. and do not get engaged. Do not engage and have a plan of action, um, you know, to have something to say and go on doing something else. Talk to those that you don't have an issue with and make sure that you're not talking about them too. Right, mm -hmm. like to someone else. So if you have like an issue with them and they're there, don't then talk to someone else like, oh, they're here and oh, look what they're doing. And uh, stop. It's like you don't want to get, they're going to hear you, they're going to know, or it's just going to be a, something's going to happen. <laughs> yeah. Right. Where, which is how the, you know, inevitable Thanksgiving fight comes, <laughs> comes to fruition. You're being an asshole. You're what? Being an asshole. Like, just stop. Yeah. And guess what? That's just going to get you reared up and reared up to get do what? Go to your old friend booze bag in the yeah. bottle and chug it. So yeah. let's do new behaviors, new actions. And also prepare if you really, you know, want to stay sober this holiday, know what to say, have another thing that you can do and get busy. Ask how you can help. Right. So get busy asking how you can help. If they approach and want to talk to you, say, you know what? I have a headache. I just don't really want to talk about anything right now, or I need to chill. And if they start to engage, you can say, you know what? Let's just not discuss this now and have a nice time. We can talk another day. I love it. And just, you know, if there is, you know, if it's that way or that you do find yourself all of a sudden in the present, you can't get out of the situation, which is never the, the, the case because we always can. We just think we're trapped. Just keep it to, you know, those those light topics, the weather, right? Just when the, the kids got out of school or whatever, just surface stuff. And then just say, excuse me, and go to the bathroom and take a breath and say a prayer, just like the serenity prayer is really, really helpful. Just know you're not alone and that you can do anything really, you could do really hard things in a span of 12 hours. And it's not even 12 hours, but we could do anything that's really hard in two hours and three hours, however the length of the party is, you can do it. You can get through it. But these are how these tips. Yeah. And also like, don't give your power away like that. Right. It's like these people, like once you're preparing yourself before you go and knowing who's going to, who you have an issue with, like just really preparing yourself this time because you want to set yourself up for success and just realize, like, take your power back. Like, don't let Uncle Jim ruffle your feathers so much, right? <laughs> and just know, like, commit to yourself. Like, no, I got this. I'm going to take these actions. I'm going to say this to help me. I'm going to not engage. And I'm going to rise above and take care of myself this season. I'm sticking with me. I love it. And I really do love that. Get busy, like get in the kitchen, wash a dish, put a, a you know, a, a side dish out, like whatever, get busy. And also if there's kids there, hang I was with just going to say that. Hang with the kids. It's totally. Right kids. Yeah, exactly. Um, and also too, do you want to go to the, your next point or should I? Go ahead. Which just brings me to live and let live. This saying is like, 
this should be everyone's mantra actually throughout the holidays, whatever party you go to, when somebody's action really drives you crazy, maybe somebody drinks too much, right? And you can't stand it. Or they have some other behavior that you really judge and think they shouldn't be doing or, you know, really irks you. And, you know, once you're looking at things to control about yourself, like wanting to stay sober this season, you really get to see how hard that can be. And really to keep the focus on yourself and off of them to realize live and let live. Everyone has their own issues that they're dealing with and they're none of your business. Mm -hmm. Just like your issue is no one's business and they can't change it in you. You're the only one that can do that. Same thing with them, right? It just takes the edge off and the focus off and like being less judgmental and just like, oh God, they're such a slob or they're such a drunk or God, they are so pathetic or they just always do this or whatever it is they always cause a scene and you know by keeping the focus on yourself and realizing how hard it is to change you and that they're not your responsibility and they're going through whatever they're going through and that they would have to do it to change it it really just helps like hmm, yeah right this is tough for everybody including myself keep the focus on me leave them alone hundred percent. It really is just like, it, it'll show you also the awareness of our own judgment, you know, when somebody's doing something and, you know, we're, we're not okay with it, you know? And it's like, first of all, like, who are we right to judge people that way? Or why we don't necessarily know why they're doing what they're doing and it's none of our business. So let them exactly live and you live the way that you need to live for that night, for that day, whatever it is. And again, I think it's just really, it just helps so much to not just have what the people that annoy you in your head and you're going, prepare yourself. Again, sit down. What annoys you about it? Okay. Like see the buttons in yourself that get pushed, prepare yourself, acknowledge them, know what they are so that you can stay away from them or have a preventative measure in place that if they get pushed, you can have an action to take, take a mm -hmm. breath. All right, here it is. Uncle Jim's pissing me off. I'm going for a walk. I'm going to leave the room, right? Yeah. Or I'm going to go help. I'm getting away. Like empower yourself. Know that you are actually in control of yourself. You do have a choice here. You can take an action mm -hmm. to, you know, stay sober, <laughs> Because a lot of the time, too, we look for annoyances and these sort of old, you know, grifes and grips or whatever they're called, resentments, um, to justify a drink. You really do see the patterns of our thinking of like what we do to set ourselves up to justify the drink that's coming at five o'clock or 12 right when you get there. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. It's beeline to the bar. I mean, you've you've literally orchestrated all of that before you got there. So, yeah. but it's wild. Like you really will see, like how much bullshit you have, like operating on just like how to work yourself up to like get the like deserve a drink. Or, like, oh, where's the bar? Like, what are we drinking? Like, you know, Aunt Susie's here, and I just let's go. And it's like, no, like. There are other things you can do and look at yourself. You're not so great either. <laughs> You're a nightmare too, okay? <laughs> You're a nightmare too. <laughs> That's true. Oh my uh, God. So go ahead. So another one too is to, and this is really big, especially around the holidays, is look out for over elation. Mm. So often the times that we loved to drink is when we were celebrating something or just feeling really good. So it was like, let's drink to exacerbate that. And like, you know, yeah. really, really feel, you know, all of that, like the jubilation of it and all. So you really want to make sure that you are in touch with that feeling, because of course we like to drink when on really any occasion we can make an excuse to have a cocktail, but 
it really is that point. I just can say it for myself, like, you know, when I was newly getting not drinking and stuff and, oh my God, it gets so hyped up over anything. And it was like, what do you associate that with? And that's alcohol. And yes, that's like my own uh, habitual pattern, but it was also, it's what's fed to us. That society is like, wow, like any cause for joy or excitement, like just turn your TV on, turn any, you know, radio on, whatever. There's always a an advertisement to force us to drink or associate good times with drinking. And it's total bullshit. You do not need the alcohol. And what's so crazy is that over time, you really see that the elation, it is already there. And it can be enhanced with people, with conversation, with the concert, with the football game, with wherever you're at, that will be your additional enhancement. You don't need the booze to do that. Yeah. And also like when you're first, you know, newly doing this and you feel joy or you feel excitement, like it's, it can be hard to feel it on its own without the drink. Like you're just not used to it and it can feel weird. Like you're like, Oh, like, but it's like, no, that's it. That's it. Like Kate just said, like we feel joy in and of itself on its own, just because we're around who we're around. We're in a great holiday, you know, event around people we love mostly. And <laughs> that's enjoyable. And like, just pull it down into that. Like, yeah, I feel excited. I feel happy. And like, that's the goodness. You don't need to pour booze on top of it, to settle into it, to be okay, you know, being happy or feeling joyful. No, that's it in and of itself. And you get used to it and just the organic naturalness of like, yeah, I feel good. That's it. Right. Yeah, because, you know, when we're feeling so good, it dims our guard down of the reality of our drinking. And that, uh, I mean, come on, I can just have one drink. And we know all too well, it isn't just one drink. Plenty of people can do that. But the reason why you're considering not drinking is because it sounds like, and if you're me at any level, you can't do that. You no longer can do that. You don't have that choice. So the what's going to lead me to the next one is to really think your drink through. When someone says like that, that sexy tagline of like, let's go meet for a drink. Let's go have a drink. You, it's not a drink and it never is a drink. And even to the person saying it, it's more often than not, not a drink. And so, yeah. Everybody, including me, loved the first drink. That was the whole vibe I was going for was the first drink, was that ah, that settlement, that ease, that comfort, that connection that you get. But the problem is you get there and then you say, well, this feels like really good. Please, like I can just have like one more or maybe just like a couple more. And then all of a sudden you're doing what you said you didn't want to do. How did I fucking get here? Yeah. And also too, like the drink does not, it actually kills the joy. It kills it. And it's so short lived. Like I never realized like the long game, like the effects uh, it has on your whole life and where you're wanting to go and how you're really wanting to feel. The short game in drinking is like, it's just for like, a little like an hour that you would feel like maybe good and then it's like hours of consequences after mm -hmm. that hours of effects of that the next mm -hmm. morning you feel like shit and then the days of guilt remorse and just you know feeling pissed at yourself or just not good just that lasts for so long and there's such a huge ripple effect and it just keeps going and then you'll all right after a few days you feel better okay but it's this cycle that's just so short term. So you mm -hmm. want to get in the long term, the long range game of like, yeah, but this, uh, this, the life I want is a healthy, good one I feel proud of, right? So the short one is like, this just doesn't last and it just makes everything worse. 
It's not worth it. Not worth it. It's so true. It's like, don't think of just the first drink. Think of your, the, like the, you know, we, we think of how we began to drink, but you got to think of the whole drink, the whole train of consequences and just think, you know, for me, it's easy because I could just think of my last drunk or just thinking about like the last few months leading up to it. I just was so sick of it. I just, even if there was, you know, like Kerry saying, even if there was that hour of fun, there was way too much negative consequences associated with that hour. I was just like, you know, you just get to a point where, you know, of course, if there's, you guys are considering not drinking where you're like, what am I doing? What is this for? Right? Yeah. And is it worth it? Is it really worth it? And just all of the mental obsession, like, Maybe not everyone is, but I feel like our culture, I mean, I'm not talking about alcoholic. I'm talking about just having like being in our society with a big drinking culture of it all. It's just always so consuming of like, who's getting the booze? How much? When, like, I remember saying to Kate, in our case, we were pretty intense, um, but we would always say like, I'd, I'd wake up going to either we I was home already at my parents house or we were in Manhattan and we were going to go home for Thanksgiving and the the first thing I said to her was what time are you going to start drinking (laughs) I mean literally was all I thought about the whole day was about prepping that not getting too drunk not letting everyone see how much I was drinking just pretending it was a nice Christmas (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> just having a beautiful Christmas wine and I was fucking hammered and it was mm. just like and throwing up I mean it was just and coming back in and starting over you know getting a fresh off I mean, it's just unbelievable and just constantly like how much are you drinking how when are you gonna start and then that was it right and ugh, just not having that anymore it's yeah. such a freedom Okay, guys, that was part one of our two-part series of Holiday Survival Guide, How to Stay Sober or Try Not Drinking this holiday season. We'll get to you guys next week with part two. Stay tuned, guys. We are thrilled to be here, thrilled to be here with each other and feel so privileged to try and carry a message of hope and positive change to one other person out there. So please subscribe and review and share our podcast to reach that person. And follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Soulcess Twins and get daily inspo and connect with us. Let's build this community together. 100%. So come back next week and we'll see you then. Get soul-sessed with us, Soul Tribe. That's it. Bye, guys.